All right, hey guys, what's going on? This is Space here, and welcome back to another video. All right, so today we've got a very special video. So as you guys have noticed, I started off a new series at the beginning of this year. It was the movie recommendation series, and now I'm just going to be going through each one of them and just like uh, giving some bonus stuff, talking about some ones that I also uh, were thinking about that I was thinking about recommending that I didn't. So let's do this thing. All right, so we started off the year with Sing Street. Now, I actually stumbled upon this movie quite accidentally. I saw it once in 2017, and that was amazing. Such an awesome movie. I definitely recommend it. Look at me. I'm recommending movies within the movie recommendation video. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, all right. So, I stumbled upon it on accident, you know. I uh, saw just one John Carney movie, and then I noticed uh, during Christmas, right after Christmas, I think it was like the 26th or something like that, or maybe even later than that. I don't know. Uh, I was on uh, Google Movies and TV or whatever it's called. I don't know. It's uh, the movie app that they have for Google. Google. And I noticed that they're having like an after Christmas sale or whatever, or maybe even the Christmas sale and whatever, you know. Uh, so, and I was looking through and I saw Sing Tree. I was like, you know what? That sounds pretty good. I don't really know why it grabbed my attention. So, like, you know what? I, was, I guess I was reading through the synopsis or whatever. I was like, you know what? That sounds pretty good. And then when I bought it, I was like, oh, wait. And I realized it was by the same director as Once, John Carney. I was like, oh my goodness, yes. Because I loved it Once. And I was like, all right, it's going to be great. And I watched it and I was just absolutely blown away. I actually watched it twice this year, at least twice, I think. And I even bought the soundtrack, too, because that's how much I like the movie. It's so good. It's got an amazing soundtrack, and ah, it's just so much fun to watch. And, uh, yeah, that is the reason why that one was recommended uh, this year. And that movie was actually the movie that inspired me to start the movie recommendations, so I knew I had to get this movie out there. got to get uh, some attention to it, even though, of course, I only have, like, maybe four viewers or so. So, but, yeah, you know, that's four more people that know about the movie, so that's good. All right, so then after that, we have Leon the Professional. Uh, this one I've heard about, and I even uh, have played as Leon in the uh, game Bro Force. It's a lot of fun, very fun game. Uh, I haven't recorded it yet, but I probably will record uh, an episode or two of it eventually, or maybe even like a whole series. I don't know. Um, but yeah, and I, I was playing that, and I didn't realize like who the character was at first. I've had the game for uh, four years, I think. I don't know. I've had it for a while. Uh, anyways, so I played as that, and uh, they added him in the game. I really didn't know who he was, but I was like, you know, this guy kind of looks like Nicolas Cage for some reason. <laughs> in the uh, game, he looks kind of like Nicolas Cage. I don't know why that is, why I, why I thought it was Nicolas Cage, but I thought it was. Then I uh, looked on the Broforce wiki, or whatever it is, and I saw that uh, the character was uh, from Leon the Professional. It was Leon the Professional, uh, the character that you play as. And I was like, all right, cool, cool. And I was like, you know what? I want to see all of the movies that are in uh, that are used in Broforce. I've seen most of them. There are like a few that I haven't seen, but for the most part, I've seen uh, most of the movies that the characters are from in the game. And I was like, all right, you know, I got to see this. And I saw it and I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. And yeah, that's why I recommend it. I was just so blown away by it. It's definitely one of the best action movies out there. It's just so amazing, so emotional too, and just so many great performances in the movie too. So that was definitely the clear-cut choice for that month. Some months I had a tough decision deciding what to uh, do that month, but uh, that one and Sing Street were definitely clear cuts. Now the next one we have is Whiplash for March, and this is one I really wish that I saw back when it was released. I think it was released in 2014 or so. It was released a little bit ago, but I really wish that I paid attention to it when it was out, but sadly I missed it, and man is it amazing. I love music uh, movies, as you can see, by my love of Sing Street, as well as some other uh, music movies and stuff. Uh, I actually think this is the uh, one of the only movie uh, music movies that I recommended this year, uh, besides Sing Street. Yeah, I think it is. Okay. Anyways, yeah. So I was like, wow, this is amazing. Uh, really good soundtrack too. It's got a lot of nice jazz music, and it's like really inspiring. Seeing Andrew go through all of this and still wanting to continue drumming and stuff, and just I like, keep his driving force just wants to keep on at it. That's pretty inspiring. So yeah, it's really well directed. It's got some great music, like I said before, great performances, and yeah, so good. And all right, so, and of course we had um, Big Trouble in Little China, such a hilarious movie, probably one of my favorite John Carpenter movies, I don't know what my favorite one is, but maybe Halloween, I don't know, anyways, but yeah, this is such a hilarious movie, and it's really a lot different from the rest of his movies, like most of his movies are kind of serious, though, some of them, uh, I haven't actually seen all of them, of course, but some of them are a little silly. But uh, for the most part, he does like more serious movies. So this is a lot of fun to see. It's a very fun action movie. It's got some uh, great characters like uh, Jack Burton, the main character, who is played by, of course, Kurt Russell. Such an awesome character. Definitely one of the best action movie characters there is. So funny. He's got some great one-liners and stuff, some great jokes. Ah, so much fun. And the soundtrack, too, is also made by John Carpenter, who, of course, also made uh, some of the other soundtracks to his movies, including, of course, Halloween, probably the most prominent of his soundtracks. Um, yeah, so, so, so good. Great music, and, uh, yeah. 
And some of these movies I've only seen once. I've seen Sing Street two times. I've only seen Leon the Professional once. Sadly, I'm going to rewatch it pretty soon, probably. I've seen Whiplash probably two times, maybe even three times. Uh, and I've also seen uh, Big Trouble in Little China uh, one time, I believe. Yes. And then uh, the other ones that I've seen multiple times, I've seen Game Nights twice. And uh, I think that is it, actually. Yeah, that is it. Okay. No, three times, actually. I've seen it three times. Anyways, okay, sorry. Anyways, so, now we're on to May, which is The Artist. And I really don't remember how I heard about this movie. Uh, when I went to my movie store, or I guess not really movie store, like secondhand store, uh, I always see it there, but I never really, like, got interested into it until I read it, read about it or heard about it. I don't really know how I heard about this movie, but I was like, you know what? That sounds awesome. Maybe, you know, I really don't know how I found this movie, but I found it. So, um such an amazing movie it's a uh, great um period piece i guess you know it's like it's pretty darn accurate to how uh silent films were back in the day or even has the same uh, aspect ratio which i thought was really nice nods and uh just so amazing like it really keeps you there and like holds you to the very end and it's like i think like almost two hours so it's pretty impressive for a silent film just so much fun to watch and it's also like really dramatic too and just ah just everything about it i love it so much i love silent films and this was definitely a great nod to silent films definitely one of my favorite silent films my favorite silent film of this decade so that isn't really that many to be honest but you know just so good ah it's amazing too it's got a really fun uh choreography too like the uh dance scene at the end of the movie great uh, and yes, okay. So next we have Game Nights, which, oh my goodness, I died in the movie theater when I saw this uh, movie. I was like, dude, this movie is so good. And uh, when it was released onto uh, DVD and Blu ray and all that jazz, you know, I was like, all right, and I rewatched it too. I rewatched it twice. I rewatched it once with my cousins and my aunts. I think that was all those, all the people that were there. My mom was there too. And uh, my cousins, so funny. They liked it too. And uh, yes, definitely a great movie this year. Probably one of my favorite movies of this year too. Definitely one of the best comedies of the year. Uh, so funny, so original, so inventive too. Good stuff. Then after that, I also watched uh, Begin Again when I got home back from Chicago. And uh, yeah, oh, it's such a great movie. One of the ones that I've been wanting to see for a while now, ever since I saw Sing Street. I was like, all right, I got to see all three of his uh, music movies. I think those are the only movies that he's done so far. So, uh, But I would love to see another movie by him. Uh, I think he's doing a miniseries too, which I think is cool. John Carney, that is. And anyways, okay, so yes, uh, I wanted to recommend that, but I was like, you know what? Uh, I don't want to do two John Carney movies. You know, I want to bring attention to some other movies too, besides just the music movies and stuff. Cause, you know, because I've already got two music movies on the list of movie recommendations this year. So like, all right, you know, I'll recommend it as well. Like in addition to Game Nights, you know, if you guys want to see some extra movies or something. Like, of course, you know, one movie is only about two hours long. So you know, if you want to spend some more time watching a movie that month, then yeah. Anyways, yeah. So, oh man, such a great movie too. I think it's my least favorite of his free musical movies, but I still really like it. Uh, I feel like the ending is it's pretty good. I don't think it's really as good as the rest of the movie, but for overall, it's a great movie. So much fun, and ah, good stuff. And next up, we have an absolute classic that is North by Northwest. I'm embarrassed to say that I just saw it this year, and oh, so good. And uh, definitely one of my favorites, Alfred Hitchcock movies. Not my favorite. I think my favorites would have to be, there's three that I really like that I really can't decide which one I like the best. That is Vertigo, uh, Rear Window, and Psycho, of course. Yes. Ah, so good. I love those ones, and I love this one, too. Such a fun movie, too. Very, like, action-packed and stuff. Just so many great, like, fun action scenes and, like, some great acting, too. Great moments and really well-written script, too. I like the music, too. Like, the opening, uh, especially the music in the opening, good stuff. And like the very end to like the last quote unquote final uh, action scene is just so amazing. Definitely one of Alfred Hitchcock's most action packed movies. All right, so I wanted just to say this before I talk about this movie. So this, uh, the recommendations aren't what I think are like the best movies of all time or whatever. There's movies I really enjoyed that I think you guys might enjoy. I want to bring attention to it. Movies that are maybe underrated or, you know, uh, definitely North by Northwest isn't underrated. But, you know, some of you guys may have not heard about it. So I just want to bring you attention to these movies. So then in August, I recommended Sahara. Now, I do admit this isn't the best movie ever made, of course, but it is very entertaining. I feel like it's underrated. I don't think, of course, like I said before, it's not like the best movie ever. There's better movies, uh, better adventure movies than this, like Indiana Jones, of course. This is still a very fun movie, very entertaining, and uh, yeah, it's just so much fun. I just really enjoyed watching this, and I really wish they made this into a series. It would have been a great series, but sadly, you know, I never took off. It didn't really do very well in the box office, but uh, it would have been so good. 
Next up, we have 10 Things I Hate About You. This is a movie that I'm definitely going to be watching every year. I just love it so much. It's a great, fun 90s movie. Very, very 90s. And it's really cool seeing Heath Ledger play a quote-unquote normal person. You know, of course, he plays the Joker. And he does such an amazing job as the Joker, too. But uh, it's cool seeing him as well just, like, playing, like, you know, kind of normal roles. Like, kind of like what he did in The Patriot and stuff. So, yeah, he's just such a versatile actor. It's really hard to believe that he's the one that played the Joker. It's just... Ah, impressive. I wish he lived longer so we could see what uh, else he would have done in his career. I said that in this video too. This movie is packed with some really good characters. I love all of the characters in the movie. Even like the jerk character, you know, he's still, he's a, he's a big jerk, but you know, I still like him as a character too. And uh, yeah, just uh, so much good stuff. I really like the writing in this movie too. And the directing is nice too. Like, it really just like has such a very 90s feel to it, which I love. It's great. And the soundtrack is pretty darn solid too, I really enjoyed the soundtrack. Alright, so now we have Matchstick Men, which is from October, we're getting pretty close to the end, and then at the end I'll reveal the movies that I was going to recommend, but then another movie replaced it, and I was like, alright, this movie, I have to get this one out here, sorry this movie, but this movie is going to be recommended. Okay, so Matchstick Men, ah oh, man, I love this movie so much uh, when I first saw it, I actually saw it back, uh... I don't really know when I saw it, honestly. I think it might have been during the summer, like maybe July or something, and I didn't recommend it. It was one of the movies I wanted to recommend. I was like, alright, I even saved the picture for like the uh, picture that I used in the uh, video. I was like, alright, I'll save that and I will make this a recommendation. Then I watched something else and I was like, alright, you know what? <laughs> uh, I don't really know what it was, honestly. I've, hmm. It may have been, uh, it may have been North by Northwest. I don't know. Anyways, so, uh, yeah. Such a fun movie, and a uh, really good, like, kind of uh, con man movie, you know? Uh, I was going to say heist movie, it really isn't a heist movie, but it's a good con man movie, you know? And this is definitely one of my favorite Nicolas Cage performances, he's just such an amazing job, and Sam Rockwell too, which is so awesome. This is kind of the movie where I really started paying attention to Sam Rockwell. I saw him in uh, Free Billboards as well, that also got my attention, uh, as uh, so amazing. If you haven't seen that movie too, that's great. Um, but yeah, he's just such a great actor, really want to see more of his movies. And I really like the style of the movie too, it's got that nice early 2000s feel, okay? it just really captures it really well. It's got some really nice cinematography too, Ridley Scott does an amazing job, like usual of course. And the soundtrack's pretty fun too. Alright, so we're pretty much at the end, we've got two more movies. One of those is of course Modern Times, a Charlie Chaplin classic. This is my second favorite Charlie Chaplin movie, my first would definitely have to be uh, City Lights. I love that movie so much. But this one is a definitely a very close second. It's just so much fun. Uh, of course, Charlie Chaplin's movie, Charlie Chaplin movies are always a lot of fun. He also adds a little drama in it too, just a nice little twist to just give it some extra spice, extra flavor. And yeah, some really impressive uh, shots and stuff in this movie too. Like I saw like a video uh, showing how he did some of this stuff. It's like really impressive, really ingenious too. He's just such a great uh, pioneer in film. And it's really amazing what they were able to do back then. So awesome. Like I said before, of course, I really like silent films. This is actually the second silent film that I recommended. And I actually recommended two movie, music, mu music, movie, freaking, whatever. Uh, music, movie, music, movie, movies about music. There we go. <laughs> Just trying to find the right words there. Uh, so, yeah. thought well, that was interesting. Anyways, so, last and certainly not least, we have Enemy at the Gates. And I do, uh, I think I said this in the uh, video, I do admit this isn't the best World War II movie out there. I'd have to give that to probably Saving Private Ryan. But I still feel like it's a pretty darn good movie. It's definitely very entertaining. It's got some uh, history behind it, too. Of course, it's not just like just a freaking made-up story completely. You know, I'm pretty sure it's probably not all of the stuff happened in the movie. But, you know, it gives you a good idea. Of course, like I said before, like the uh, battles that were going on in Russia at the time. And although it does have some historical inaccuracies, I still feel like it's definitely a great thing to watch. And uh, very entertaining, like I said before. And, like, the sniping in it is pretty darn awesome, too. It just has, like, so many, like, action-packed scenes. And a uh, pretty good story, too. I really enjoyed the story. And uh, some intense scenes, too. Like, you know, like, uh, filled with tension. It's just great. I love tension in movies. And this one does it pretty darn well. Alright, so now on to the movies that I did not recommend this year. That I wanted to, but I just... Uh, didn't because they were beat out by some other movies. I also have some a uh, few more movies to talk about that I recommended in Matchstick Men, I believe. So, I believe the first movie that I was thinking about recommending that was replaced, like it wasn't like the first movie I was going to recommend. The first movie that I was going to recommend was always Sing Street, but I don't really know what beat it out. I think it may have been Big Trouble in Little China. I don't know. Uh, but that was going to be West Side Story. I really like West Side Story. Uh, it was a very fun musical. I think the reason why I chose not to recommend it, because I already recommended two uh, movies with uh, music, like not qu uh, quite musicals. This one is definitely a musical, but 
they're just like movie driven uh movie driven music music driven movies i really can't talk today i don't know what's going on anyways so yeah uh west side story really fun movie the choreography is so amazing in this movie and the songs are just awesome really good stuff and the story although it is technically not quite original it is really good it's a really nice take on romeo and juliet's good stuff and uh, definitely one of my favorite versions of Romeo and Juliet, even though it's not quite Romeo and Juliet, you know. Anyways, ah, good stuff. Definitely recommend it. Uh, let's see, what else did I not recommend? Oh, yes, um, Drunken Master of Jackie Chan. This movie is so funny. It's got some really impressive action scenes, too, and uh, just such a great movie. One of my favorites, Jackie Chan performances. It's really uh, just such a fun movie to watch. Very entertaining. And there are two different versions. There's the Cantonese version, which of course is the original language that it was uh, made in. And then you also have the English dub version. I do prefer the Cantonese version because it has a more level of authenticity to it compared to the dub version, which just looks kind of weird. You know, like hearing those voices coming out of those people doesn't feel quite as right. This is also probably the reason why I like Battle Royale, but I do admit that I don't like it as much as I thought I would originally, you know? Because the voices like in the dub, it just feels like unnatural. It doesn't feel like that would be their voices. You know, so I feel like what I should do in the future is try to watch the Japanese version with uh, English subtitles. I definitely would probably like it better. But anyways, I'm getting off topic here. So yeah, uh, just so, so fun. It's got a really good story too. Very odd, but also just really fun and hilarious story. And uh, yeah, I believe that were the, that's the only movies that I was going to recommend that I did not. Uh, I feel like, oh, actually, no, there's one more. It is uh, Point Break, which is so amazing. It's uh, got a lot of cool surfing moments. There's like a really some awesome moments in this that are really well done just really amazing like there's a chase scene that's super impressive it's a uh, steady cam following chase scene just really awesome and there's like a skydiving scene too there's a couple of skydiving scenes that are just so well shot and really impressive stuff and the movie's really fun too it's a little cheesy but it's still just so much fun uh really fun summertime movie if you have uh any time in the summer you just want to watch a movie definitely recommend watching point break during the summer it's great and now, a uh, few more things to talk about here. So, in uh, Matchstick Men, I recommended Halloween, the new Halloween, which is amazing. It's coming out to DVD and digital, Blu-ray, whatever you want. Uh, it's coming out pretty soon in January. Really excited for that. It's a great addition to the Halloween series. And over my Christmas break, I've seen a few more Halloween movies, too. Like, I saw uh, H2O and Resurrection during my break. And then I also saw uh, Halloween 2 during Halloween this uh, past year, which was awesome. Of course, I'm talking about the original Halloween 2, not Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, uh, obviously. And, um, so, uh, yeah, H2O was pretty darn good. I really enjoyed it. I feel like it needs more. It's really short, and, it, um, yeah, it just feels like it needs more. Michael comes in pretty late to the movie. The movie's basically over when he comes in, so... Uh, but, yeah, I thought, I thought it was pretty good. Not as good as this one, the new Halloween, which I think is amazing. Uh, definitely a great follow-up to the original. I don't think it's as good as the original, but I do think it is a uh, pretty darn good sequel. I'd say it's probably my second favorite in the series. And then after that, of course, Halloween 2, which is also pretty darn amazing. Not as good as the uh, first one as well, but still good. And then uh, um, Resurrection. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I think they tried with the movie. Uh, the opening scene is absolutely amazing. I love the opening scene. It's really well done. That's probably the best part of the movie. If you only want to watch the opening scene of that movie, then you're probably good. You know, you, you can think that the rest of the movie is great. But the, the truth is, the premise I feel like is pretty good. Like uh, it's a bunch of kids that are like part of this show thing, or whatever the reality sh reality show. If I can talk. Um, and they go into the Myers house to figure out why Michael Myers is like how he is, you know? So, uh, I thought that was a pretty interesting premise. I just feel like it was just kind of not really well done. I don't know. I, don't, I just don't know. It's just, ah, yeah. Uh, the characters were all right. There were a few that I liked, but most of all, most of them, I just kind of like, uh, you know, <laughs> they're just kind of there, honestly. So. Yeah, I think overall it does have its moments. Like, there's a pretty funny moment in it, and there's like some uh, some alright mo moments in it. But the opening is really amazing. That's probably the best part of the movie. Anyways, I don't know why I'm talking about this. <laughs> We're talking about movie rec movies that I recommend. This is definitely not a movie I recommend. The opening scene, I highly recommend. If you haven't seen it, if you've seen H2O, make sure you see H H2O first before you watch it. The opening scene. But if you have seen that, then watch the opening scene. It's worth it. The rest of it is uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, the other movie they recommended was, uh, Bad Times of the El Royale. Such an amazing movie. A great kind of mystery-esque movie. I guess it is really a mystery movie. Uh, really, uh, suspenseful and, uh, thriller too. I feel like the last act isn't quite as strong as the rest of it, but overall it's 
really good, a great original movie, and uh, yeah, I love original movies, you know, uh, seeing all of these movies that are in franchises is cool and stuff, you know, like, it's cool to see Aquaman and stuff, which is really good, by the way, Aquaman, amazing, um, but uh, yeah, it's really good to see, like, original movies, too, it's, uh, yeah, and before we end off here, there are two more movies that I was going to recommend this year that I never got around to that were both in the movie theaters. I don't think they are now, but they're probably going to be coming out uh, to DVD and whatever, physical copy, digital copy. Uh, I would say probably in February, maybe January, I don't know. Um, but that is, of course, First Man. Absolutely loved it. I saw it twice. Ah, so good. And also Bohemian Rhapsody. Sadly, I only saw that once, but oh, so, so good. But all right, I think that about does it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this little recap. And next year, we're going to be starting off with another set of movie recommendations each month. All right, well, guys, see you guys then. Also, okay, before I end this video off, I just wanted to say that I will probably not be posting any more videos this week. As you can see, this week is pretty much over. But next week, I'll get back to posting some more videos. I'll be finishing off Lego Harry Potter probably on Monday or Tuesday. So that'll be fun. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching once again. I'll see you guys next time.